one on that field to get his number retired here with the San Francisco 49ers on a big day. Monday Night Football, 888-957-9570. What's your X factor? What's your X factor for today? Mine is the defensive line. Yours is who? Oh, I'm going to say whoever the linebacker is that's starting next to Fred Warner. Oh, if it's like DeAndre that. Campbell or if it's Dominic Flanagan Fowles, I think the spotlight's going to be on those guys. Devondre Campbell coming over from Green Bay. He that's has some things to say. Big spot. It's a big spot to fill. Right? Big spot. And to your point, Rodgers does know them. He does know them. He does know them in Green Bay, but the Niners know this Jets defense too. So there's going to be a lot of familiar faces, a lot of familiar schemes. Uh, but my X Factor defensive line, how can you slow down uh, this Jets offense? How can you slow down Brees Hall? So who's going to play? How much can we expect these guys to play? Let's start with Brendan Ayuk. He played 82% of the snaps last year. 82% of the snaps. He's on the field basically all day long. Kyle Shanahan, how much does he expect Brendan Ayuk to play? Don't know yet. You know, he's, you know, I think he plays most of the game usually. Probably be surprised with that same amount, but uh, he's in good shape. He's had a really good week. Uh, his soreness hasn't been too big after each practice. He's pushed it real hard, do some stuff ac- extra after, and um, he looks good and he's ready to go. He looks good and he's ready to go. Very eager to see what Ayuk does after the hold in uh, with the San Francisco 49ers. Even if he's just a decoy to draw sauce out of the out of the frame, out of the picture, I think that he can be extremely effective without, you know, having a 100-yard receiving night, yep. don't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Taking away Sauce Gardner. I wonder if Sauce Gardner, they're going to allow him to shadow Brendan Ayuk. Will he follow him all over the football field? Would it be Debo Samuel? So, Brendan Ayuk, we'll all be wondering after the big flashy contract and the money that he's going to receive. Now, you see the breakdowns of base salary. It's basically about the guarantees that he did receive. How much will Brendan Ayuk play? How effective will he be? What about Trent Williams? We'll see. I'd like him to, but you got to watch it. We got to talk to him. It's always, I haven't done this too much with a tackle. You know, those are a little old linemen or different with rotating and stuff like skill positions and everything. But it also seems weird to just watch Trent sitting on the sideline next to us. But that's something we'll be on top of throughout the game. And he'll be honest with us and how he feels. And I know Chris will be watching that a ton. Well, you Chris Forster, offensive line coach, I was just going to say, Shasky, he said this about Trent. Trent is Trent. <laughs> he continues to be Trent. He gets out there, and uh, I think as always, I think we've talked about before, and getting guys ready to play. There's that, there's that push and pull of being full speed against somebody shoving on you, and that's that. Yesterday got him a little bit, but uh, today he seemed much better. And uh, tomorrow he'll continue to push himself, and we'll we'll see how it goes. We're gonna really find out about conditioning where this team's at yeah. fourth quarter if, yeah. if it's a tight game. Last night, Chris Collinsworth. Yeah, you heard that. He, I'll give him credit. Like, he, yep. he made a really astute point. Both these teams are not ready to go to overtime. Nope. They're just not. And you could see that the Rams' defense in particular was gassed. I mean, we talk all about preseason and getting ready, and, and nothing's going to get you 100% ready right. for a real game just because it's different. But you could see that the defense of the Rams was completely gassed late in that game. Completely gassed. They were. They were. They were done. They were done. So I think you're going to find out in the fourth quarter tonight, especially like Trent Williams, does he have a lot of pre-snap infractions where you start to get tired, yep. you're huffing and puffing, you lose your 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 focus a little, is there a hold, things like that. Like, I, I'm going to be hyper uh, attentive to what Trent yeah. Williams is doing. But Nakanurse will be out on number 71. It will be out on him. By the way, uh, 95-70 game is live from the Santa Clara Hilton today. Make sure you stop by. Stop by and go see the fellas. Steiny Goo from 10 to 2. Will there dance from 2 p.m. to kickoff? 2 p.m. to kickoff. Stop by, say what's up to those boys. And then after the game, they won't be at the Hilton. They'll be here in studio. It'll be Mark Grandy. It'll be Sterling Bennett. It'll be Kyle Matchett for 49ers overtime. Immediately after the game, you'll want to tune in to 95-7 the game for that. Overtime still rolling strong here at 95-7 the game. That'll be right after the game again. That's Grandy, Sturdy Bennett, and Kyle Matson. Uh, right after the game when the Niners take on the New York Jets. Again, the Jets, their pass D is really good. Um, they don't play with leads. They weren't able to play with leads last year because their quarterback situation was porous, and I'm being kind there <laughs> with Zach Wilson and whoever else. But they have Mike White, Zach Wilson, who the hell knows. But their pass defense was second in the league. Second in the league in terms of yards given up, 169 yards given up per game. Can the Niners run on this team? I do think they can run on the Jets. But will they be able to run with Christian McCaffrey? If they don't have Christian McCaffrey tonight, or say if they have a Christian McCaffrey who's 80% compromised, it is week one. Would you err on the side of caution to say, you know what, Christian, sit this one out? 
Or is this game too important for the 49ers to start off on the right foot? Well, they're going to say they're all important. That's what they always say, right? The standard answer. I just think you start off, whether CMC's in the lineup or not, this feels like a start the game off by letting everyone touch the ball. Meaning, I know you want to run it down team's throat. I think you got to throw it a little here early in the game. Get Debo his touch. Get Kittle his touch. Get Jennings a touch. Or Ayuk, depending on who's you know in on, on the first series. Like, I think you got to spread the ball around classic Niner style just to get everybody feeling good and to get that defense backed off that line of scrimmage a little. And I think it's I think it's Brock. I'm, I keep coming back to Brock. I think we're avoiding the obvious here. And the obvious is that everyone's going to be out waiting. The, the country is waiting for Brock to show signs of not being as good as he was. And I think he's going to come out and he's going to look really good. I think he's going to look really well oiled. I'm going to spread the ball around. And I think Shanahan and him have been practicing for two weeks on what this opening script is going to be. And I think they're going to spread it evenly across the board. And all of our favorite guys are going to get touches early. It's going to back everyone off. And then they'll be able to establish a run, whether it's Jordan Mason, whether it's CMC or whoever. Like, I, I, I just think they're going to come out hitting, hitting the ground running. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. And that would be great for Brock Purdy to kind of shut people down, especially with Aaron Rodgers on the other side. Now, Aaron Rodgers, how he looks, it's going to get a lot of headlines early, right? They're going to be hyper-focused on him after not playing last season. Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams, Tyler Conklin, what's going to happen here uh, with their offense? But I, I get it. Brock Purdy's going to get all the headlines, how he plays, whether it's good or bad. It's going to start off first take. It's going to start off get up. It's going to start off on our show, the quarterback, the quarterback, the quarterback. But the offensive line and defensive line here, I think, can help out tremendously. Can you slow down Quentin Williams? Because Quentin Williams will push that pocket. He'll push Brendel and he'll push Banks. He'll push plenty into that backfield. Hopefully they can slow down Quinn and Williams in the middle because it all starts with him. If he's controlling the line of scrimmage, if he's controlling the A gaps and the B gaps, and and the Niners can't run the ball against Quinn, and now you become one-dimensional, I don't think this is a team you want to mess around with to become one-dimensional. So how this offensive line fires off the football, your point is well taken about throwing the football early on and spreading it around and loosening them up a little bit here uh, to be able to run the ball, especially later in the football game. But both trenches here, man, this is, to me is a trench type game. This feels like a physical fist fight where the score will be ugly, the game at time will be ugly. He's got to be more physical to this football team coming in to the West Coast. They're going to try to set a tone here. So defensive line and offensive line for me, uh, it, to me, it's, it comes out and up to the trenches tonight. Well, let's go to the outside. Like, Diamond Lenore, to me, should be able to match up somewhat with Garrett Wilson. That's a, that To me, that's an interesting, very interesting matchup. And then Mike Williams, the bigger body guy, like I'd probably throw Charvarius on him. Yeah. I, I, and I know that they, they don't like to do that exclusive stuff, matchup. but like that makes a lot of sense. And now I go back to like tight end, right? You got Conklin out there. Like Charvarius knows Mike Williams for the AFC West days. Exactly. Kansas City, Chargers, they had a lot of battles against each other. You know, and, and they can't allow Brees Hall to run wild in this game. I, I think that's... That is that is paramount because once they get the play action game going, that's when they're going to take shots down the field. So I want to see this secondary that we've been hyping up, and I have I, I've been right there. I think it's a really good secondary. Here's a great test. Yep. You're a Hall of Fame quarterback. I know he hasn't played in a lot, and two really good receivers who are very different from each other. One's a silky route runner with great catch radius. The other guy yep. is a big body dude who wants to go downfield. Uh, look at that, some stats here. Week one NFL passing touchdowns. Week one NFL passing touchdowns, and I think it's a direct correlation to teams not playing or starters in the preseason. So in 2019, you had 61 touchdown passes in week number one. 2020, you had 52 passing touchdowns in week, in week number one. 2021, it bumped back up to 61. 2022, 51 passing touchdowns week one. Last season, 37 passing touchdowns, so a big-time drop-off from the previous four seasons. In pending Monday Night Football, so far you've had 33 passing touchdowns. And you brought up Jalen Hurts and watching Jordan Love throw off his back foot. And at times, Kansas City was a little off. Mm -hmm. And Baltimore was a little off. And you look around the league, Stafford. everybody was a little off. Golf, a little yeah. off. These teams not played in the preseason early. I think they're going to have to play their starters moving forward. If you're going to play preseason – Play your starters for a quarter because the rust is coming in. We Cincinnati was awful yesterday. Well, Cincinnati awful. also didn't practice with Jamar didn't Chase. Exactly. And T. T. Higgins has been hurt. Your point about that 
It's hard for me to say play more preseason games when I know they're going to add another regular season yeah, game. Not, not playing preseason. I'm saying with the preseason games, play your starters for a quarter. Yeah. I, Whether it's two preseason games, three preseason games, because you're going to go into week one and you're going to see a lot of sloppiness. I think you're going to get that no matter what. I I agree that they need to be more. Like the Niners, for example, they didn't have a practice game. Like right. a, the, what do they call it? Organized scrimmages. scrimmages. They didn't have any of that. I'm interested to see if like there is a de- uh, an appreciation um, built up or a depreciation built up where losing out on those reps actually right. has hurt them. I- I'll be very interested to see. I thought they had a pretty good drive in the preseason third the game. It was also two weeks ago. And so, it was against their threes. Yeah, like this is a rhythm-based offense. But they've come out and looked pretty good every yeah. opener except the Chicago Bears opener in the last few years. That was a rough one. Cardinals yeah. one was pretty rough, too. Yeah, like four years ago, five yeah. years ago. I'm talking about like Detroit. Yeah. They blew the doors off Detroit right. for three quarters. They blew the doors off of Pittsburgh. I, I think they're going to be pretty – I think they're going to be fine. Yeah. It's just it's an interesting trend, though. Here, that passing touchdowns have been down. Here's another stat for you. This weekend, even with one game to go, there were more kickoffs returned for more yards and more returns than any week at all last year, meaning the new kickoff rule is created working. more yardage yep. and you had more action on that play this week than any week of last year. Shout out Arizona. Return to kickoff out in Buffalo. Out in Buffalo. They had to try it. They could have stole that game yesterday. But I do like the new kickoff return. It just takes time. Again, people are not patient, ready to just punt on the new kickoff after seeing it for a couple weeks. Let, let it play out. I think it will create some more drama but, by the way, at college football, they're still doing the old kickoff. Still seeing some returns out there in the college game, too. At some point, we need to play the call from Northern Illinois. Beat your Notre Dame fighting Irish, Shasky. Such a horrible loss. Oh my, Brady like, Quinn called it the top five worst losses in the program's history. Oh, I believe yeah. it. Oh, I believe it. I believe it's it. It's a horrible loss. You, can you pull, pull, roll that call? That call was Unbelievable. Unbelievable for me. Almost as bad as Auburn losing at home to Cal. Yeah, hey, Cal about the Cal. But they tried to hose Cal so bad in the fourth quarter. Did you hear Dave Fleming on the call? I was listening on the radio because Anna had took it me off for my birthday. So I had it on pause. I I knew Flynn was on the call and I listened to most of it. But he's Flynn's a bad. Cal's jerseys looked I, I did like I, unbelievable. I did like the yellow helmets. They looked incredible. I, did, I, I loved the yellow Good helmets. Good for Cal football. I, I and thus like concludes them. our talking of Cal football for this. No, I'm teasing. There was a lot of damn near upsets in uh in uh, college football this week. It was getting hairy for Oklahoma. Alabama was in a struggle for a little bit. Dion on the hot seat. Well, Dion, <laughs> they're 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 cooked. Yikes. They're cooked. Coach Prime's cooked. K Warren looked great. They played. He'll FAU. be a great coach for Florida State someday. No, nah, he's not coming to Florida State. They're not. They're oh, not come on, give him a chance. They're, no, they're, no, 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 no. I love your pride, but no, no. Are we no, sure no. Shadur no, no. is a first rounder? It's got first round talent. Doesn't have a first round mindset right now. Or offensive line. Or offensive line. Yeah, he'll was- he'll be the first to let you know in post game too. <laughs> this is a great one. Five one zero. Do you think Antonio Pierce was too conservative yesterday? I thought Shanahan was coaching the Raiders yesterday. It's for the five one zero. Putting there. Putting on that fourth one. I told you it was one of the most cowardly moves in the history of the NFL. There is nothing that I despise more when a team rolls into a season with, like, the Gardner Minshew, Brian Hoyer. I know Brissett's doing it, but they have their quarterback of the future. Right. Nothing despises me more than, we're just going to do bridge quarterback with no young guy on the <laughs> roster. It's like, what are you? What That was your grand plan? <laughs> 